on the one screen over there, so I don't know if everybody over here uh, might want to move over, maybe in the center um, or to the side, uh, so you can enjoy some of the media that he'll be displaying. The, the screen over there. Yeah. So my name is Pat McHale. I'm going to sit right here casually. Um, uh, I just was there too. Um, uh, okay, I just walked across Oakland and I'll like, add breath a little bit. Um, so I'll start with um, just repeating what I what I worked on. Uh, I worked on Marvel's Miss Adventure Flapjack back in the day, um, and, and then. Uh, Adventure Time, I was the creative director for the first couple of seasons and then became a writer for the, for the until season five. Um, and then Crick was the creator of Over the Garden Wall, which is what this panel is about. So probably never done this. Um, uh, I pitched, it used to be called Tell Me the Unknown. I pitched that in uh, 2006 before I worked in Flatback, before I knew anything about happening and stuff. Um, uh, and it was, it was based on this uh, world, we'll figure it out. Um, it was based on this world that I was, that I was kind of building in my head called Old Island Hill um, about some characters, uh, Berger and, and uh, Gerald. And basically, the, the third act of that story was what Over the Garden Wall became, it, using different characters, but like it was a similar train situation, you know, going to this place that's sort of in between, uh, you know, life and death, reality, and dreams, and all that stuff. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of, it was around for a while, uh, and kind of stood around. Um, I, I can show you the, the original pitch by the way, you see it. Um, which had, uh, Ward's name was Walter at that point, and the beast was very different than me. Um, okay, so this is, um, the first page, uh, the original page. So that was Word. <laughs> He was into cutting paper and stuff. And Greg stayed pretty much the same, but he used to wear a little sailor outfit, which I got rid of because of flapjack uh, and too many similarities. Um, I can't really see. So, uh, what's that? Oh, that's the frog. Greg's frog. Uh, that was the beast originally, which I never liked. That design it was, and I was like, ah, I just need something for this Bible. Uh, but uh, and so yeah, some of my early. Uh, so then later, um, I worked on all that stuff, um, and working on Adventure Time sort of helped the studio trust me with, with how to um, manage things and, and make stuff, and I learned a lot um, over that time about all the different aspects of production. Um, so, going back for a second, when I first moved to California, I didn't like it. Um, Sorry, um, I like I like it up here, um, but Southern California was um, uh, lack of seasons was like freaking me out. It, it wasn't that I looked in, like I, I like the people uh, and the food and, and all that stuff, but then like after like a couple years, just like what year is it? What time is it? Um, and uh, so uh, 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 I had a lot of nostalgia for the fall, for the spring, and uh, the fall definitely came through with the show and. Um, what, what I was I talking about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, so I had this plan for like an eight year, I would say in Southern California for eight years, try to learn as much as I could, and then go back east and see what I would do after that. And so after eight years, I left Adventure Time, because um, that's what I was doing at that time, and came back east, and they let me keep writing, so I, get, I got to actually keep working in the industry from, from New York, where I was living. When I was in New York, um, I sort of felt, you know, I, I was a success in some ways because I worked in the industry and, and worked on Adventure Time, which was amazing. 
but then also I felt like I'd never made a professional cooking film. And so when I was talking to Cartoon Network, um, they said, oh, well, you could pitch something to us. We can make a pilot or something uh, if, if you have any ideas that we like. And so I, I brought back some of the unknown um, and pitched that. And they're like, yeah, yeah, let's, let's work on that and develop that and see if we can make something. Um, so, uh, at, let's see. Yeah, I felt like my last chance to like, do something. Um, and the first board I did was uh, The Ringing of the Bell, which was that um, episode eight in the series with Lorna and Nancy Whispers. And uh, that was the first board I did. And I, I flew to LA to pitch it. And, uh, and they were just like, what happened to you when you were at Hawaii? It's like, it's really scary. Uh, I was like, yeah, it's, you know, there's a, there's a lighter side of the show. I'm just, I guess, and I explained, like, this is my, like, one shot to make something, and I wanted to, like, make a horror thing. Uh, and, like, that's the one I wanted to make the most. Um, and so, like, yeah, maybe you could do another board. <laughs> and this shows, like, a calmer side of the show um, for kids. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I did another board. Um, really hard to do because I, I still was thinking of it as like my last shot to make something professional and, and so there were certain things that I wanted to put in there um, and I think the pilot came out okay um, but uh, the, I'll show, I'm going to show the pilot. So I think it's kind of neat that we were able to get Elijah Wood to do the voice. Um, it sort of happened in a sort of funny way where um, when we were doing the pilot, I talked to the voice casting uh, director, and uh, we were getting some like Woody Allen-ish um, auditions uh, based on my description. I was like, ah, like I don't want it to sound like Woody Allen. Like, he sort of acts like Woody Allen a little bit, but uh, uh, I want him to sound like more of a romantic lead or something like an Elijah Wood type. Uh, and she was like, well, okay, we'll reach out to Elijah Wood. And I was like, okay. Uh, and, then, and they sent him the Bible and he just like, the drawings and everything. And he was like, yeah, yeah, like, I'll audition, I'll, you know. And so, uh, and so we did like a phone thing to you know, make sure it worked and, and it was just incredible that he was into doing it. Um, and then after we got him, it was like, like kind of a breeze to get like anyone, uh, which is kind of neat. So like, um, uh, you heard that Beatrice's voice was different. Um, it, it sounded, it was like too much attitude. And Melanie was like the perfect, Melanie Linsky was like the perfect voice, I thought, because, um, like, she's saying all these kind of mean spirited things, but her, her voice is so nice and, like, like pretty. Um, and so it was a really funny uh, juxtaposition of those two things. Um, and Colin uh, was just, like, we weren't even sure if we were going to get an adult or a kid to do the voice of Craig. Um, we had auditioned like all sorts of people. And Collins was just, just stood out the most as he, he, could, he really had a range of emotion and uh, just the, the funniest of, of anybody. Um, and it was really amazing uh, getting him to, you know, he, he would even ad lib sometimes with the basket and just mouth off and mix stuff up, uh, which is cool for like a you know, kid. Um, and then one, one interesting story was uh, when we got Christopher Lloyd, which was amazing too. Um, and when he came in to record, we had just recorded Elijah before that. And uh, they, they weren't in the same scene, so they were recording separately. And uh, Elijah was leaving just as Christopher Lloyd was walking in. And they hadn't met each other before. And they were both like, really starstruck seeing each other. Uh, and like, he's like, you're, you're Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> you know, you're, you're Elijah Lloyd. And they like, shook hands. And it was like, like starry eyes, like, and I was just watching, like, oh my gosh, this is so uh, uh, So that was really cool. They, like, they're just so good. Directing, directing them was amazing. Um, uh, like Elijah, like balancing the humor and the, the depth of the character. Christopher Lloyd was really interesting because when when I was um, when he came in, 
sort of like, yeah, no, I, I read the description a little bit, but like, tell me a little bit more about the character just to refresh. Me. And uh, I was describing the woodsman and, and how he comes off, but then also his backstory, which kind of explains it. And I was saying all this stuff, and I was like, I'm probably saying too much. And, and he's just like looking at me, like not nodding, at me, just like, you know. And then he like stands, and then he just goes in front of the microphone. And I'm like, okay, well, let's go. And, uh, and then all that stuff came out of him. Like all the stuff I've been talking about, like you could feel like this, this, uh, this burden that he was carrying and all this stuff. And it was just like, an actor, like, you can really, really do it. Um, and, uh, and then he was also like making it sort of not not funny, but uh, having a lot more life than, than what was written. Because it, it was sort of a flat character, the way it was written in some ways, and kind of like made it into this like, kind of bigger than life, um, like opera kind of thing, which was good because that was sort of the, the goal overall. Um, Shirley Jones did Beatrice's mom, which is uh, really exciting. Um, and she had never done voice acting. She, she uh, was like, uh, she, she was in tons of stuff, um, uh, but uh, Partridge Family and stuff. Uh, and she had never done voice acting before, so when she came in, it was sort of like, she was like, a, like new to acting, almost. And she came in and she was like, I don't know how, where should I stand? And it was like the cutest uh, thing. It was like, I was, like, you know, I was like telling her how, how things work here. <laughs> it's like it's really funny. Um, uh, oh, I have trouble with doing a miniseries. So there was a lot of good things about doing a miniseries um, as opposed to a full series. It's nice to tell a, a, like a short story and kind of end it. Um, it was also nice to not be doing everything all at the same time. Because when you, when you start a regular series, eventually you're doing writing and recording and post and music and everything is all happening in you but and it never ends and you just don't know when it's gonna end. Um, with the miniseries you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and there's kind of a build up and then a, a slow down. The, the bad part of doing miniseries is because of the short amount of time it's hard to get people who are full, full time um, and so there's a lot of freelance um, which wasn't necessarily bad and we were able to get a lot of amazing uh, talent but since no one was in the same uh, like workspace, there wasn't a lot of like ideas going back and forth, and so I had to communicate the same ideas over and over again. Um, and there was a lot of kind of redoing work that was really good because it just didn't work with in the context. Um, so that was probably the most frustrating thing. Was, like, throwing away amazingly talented people's great work because it just didn't work in the context. Um, let's see. Oh, so. The name change from some of the unknowns over the Dragon Ball. One of the things was we were getting rid of the book aspect of it because, you know, by the time we were making this, um, Adventure Time had come out, which had a book. Um, Chatter had come out, which had a book opening in the, in the beginning. Uh, Scarry Falls had like the magic of all these books, so it was like, okay, there's too many book things to get rid of the book. Um, but also, I think we were going to just call it Tome because it had chapters and it sounded like a cool thing. But someone, uh, somewhere uh, at the studio didn't like it because they didn't know that word. Uh, and, uh, and so it was like, ugh. ugh. Um, there was also the thing of, uh, yeah, well, so try to come up with a, a new name. We had all sorts of names like uh, uh, Dreamland Melodies and Frog Socks was even a contender. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there, I mean, there were some like funny ones and some, uh, but Over the Garden Wall felt like the most, like, uh, to the looking glass sort of feel. Um, felt like if, if it was on an old book, you kind of, you know, I don't know, kind of want to read it, I would. Um, <laughs> and let's see. I can talk about the writing. Well, a lot of the writing was like me ranting to Tom Perfect and Amalia. They were the two writers, and I. I was living in New York when we were writing it for most of it, and then like Tom and Molly didn't really know each other, so I would just like call Tom and say like, "Hey, okay, what about this?" And he's like, nah, "I don't like it." Um, and he has like really strong opinions about storytelling, and so I know that uh, if he doesn't like it, it's not necessarily a bad idea, but it's not like as good as it should be. Um, and so I pitched up. But the good thing is when he says something's good, then it's good. So 
I pitched that out to him, and he went, no, no, no. I was like, oh, that one's good. I'm like, oh, yes, okay, I got one. Uh, and so I like, write that one down, and then I pitched it to Amalia, and then she would just have like all these ideas, uh, and like, oh, maybe it could be this, maybe it could be that, and like, I'm like, oh, all these ideas, and then it's like, okay, too many ideas, and then end that phone, phone conversation at work, and then like, oh, I don't know about this, and I call Tom again, and he's like, yeah, what about these ideas? Like, no, 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 and so it was sort of like going back and forth. Um, uh, and eventually, Amalia came on and helped actually write the documents, too. Um, and then one last person I'll mention is Bert Yoon, who uh, reboarded a lot of the stuff. Um, and uh, he's an incredible storyteller, and um, he was another one who, who saved the show. Um, a lot of the, at some point, I was getting really burned out, and, uh, and he re-storyboarded so much stuff that was especially uh, getting close to the end of the series, when things really needed to start coming together. Um, so he uh, yeah, did a lot of work. Okay, I'll stop babbling. Uh, maybe we can answer some questions. Was there a... Uh, no, I'll just... Okay. <laughs> um, was there a part during the production of Over the Garden Wall where it just kind of like, it was like, just like, like really, really, really stressful for you? And yeah. Like... yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, making TV is really stressful because it's such a fast turnaround. And we had, like, uh, we didn't have a lot of um, stuff going on all at the same time, but we also had a limited uh, crew. Um, we didn't have all the supervisors and stuff that we might have. And then also, um, it's still the same TV casing. So it's still like, if you don't get something done that week, then you're not going to get your edit and you're done. So like, there's a lot of that kind of stress like, all the time. So pretty much the whole, the whole run of that year was like a very stressful time. Um, and that's how all TV shows are all the time. Um, so th that's why when, when you see like stuff like, ah, this show sucks, it's like, no, it doesn't. Like, <laughs> it's so hard to make that, that crummy show. Uh, just, just don't say anything bad about it. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering how much input you had into the music of Over the Garden Wall. Um, I, it's hard to say. It was a lot of back and forth between me and, and the composers. Um, and then also some of the songs were written by board artists or their friends or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of like me kind of finding songs and, and styles of music that were, were exciting to me for the mood of of an episode and then kind of giving that all to the composers and then them figuring out ways of using it and building it uh, into, into what it became. Um, so, yeah, I, was, I think I was more involved in music than maybe a lot of creators are with their shows, but um, you know, it, would, yeah, it was really most composers. Are you working? Uh, well, I mean, I'm yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I, there, there's like, I was trying to fit Elijah, because my, the, the, for the pilot, I, I originally wrote it with a lot more stuttering and uh, awkwardness. There's plenty of that in, this, in the main series, but, but I cut out a lot of it in the pilot, because it didn't really work with Elijah. Like, um, like he's, it, it worked better when he was getting into those weird, poetic, like, dark, Places um, and so like that's that's the way we wrote it and like I don't necessarily do that um, and I don't think Elijah does either but he can he can uh, pull that off really well um, uh, but yeah there's definitely a lot of me in words um, also my friend B um, that was sort of the basis of a lot of the stuff because we we, we have similar uh, social issues uh, but his is more like he gets in he starts talking and then he says something that people might be offended by and then just keep digging a hole for himself. Um, and, uh, yeah. There wasn't too much of that show, but I guess it might be. And then Greg is sort of me as a little kid. So it's sort of like a juxtaposition of, of you know, what happens to you. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, I think whenever you're writing stuff, or at least for me, maybe not all writers, but for me, I, I yeah, actually, just for me, I don't like like making fun of people or something or caricaturing people that I know so much. I end up doing it and everyone does it, but um, I think I feel more comfortable when I'm caricaturing myself. So like even like the Woodsman and Beatrice and all that and, and like Sarah, like that's all like different aspects of me. Like Sarah's probably the 
the closest to how I was in high school, maybe, or something. Um, like, just the weirdo that, like, he's like, I don't care, you know? <laughs> I dressed up like a pink elephant and a chipmunk all the time, and whatever. Um, uh, but I think I'm more than bored now, maybe just because of the stress of making shows <laughs> and having to talk about it. Um, Can you talk about uh, what was in the AA? Yeah, uh, there, there was one, well, one of them was the comic uh, sort of stuff. I mean, it, it, had, it would have to be different now, because we kind of reused um, certain moves for different things. So I, I, I had an arc where Word and Greg became animals, and so when, and when they became animals, Beatrice couldn't talk to them anymore, because she's not really, you know, like an animal. Uh, and so. They were, and she didn't know where they were, so it was sort of like they got separated for a little while in the series. And uh, Work and Greg kind of went up into like animal world, and that, that was where like the frog story took place. Where like, yeah, and, and in that in that story originally, um, Greg's frog can talk, and, and, and so they could talk to each other. And when when they became animals, and then they meet the frog's dad, who's like this kind of um, drifter, uh, and so there's like this emotional thing with like. You know the frog realizing, you know, he finds his dad and then he, he like realizes his dad's not going to really be around, so he like goes with Greg and he's sort of emotional. But it was kind of sweet too. Um, so some of that stuff got lost. Uh, there's also one about um, these two little girls that were uh, sort of like Sunbonnet Sue. If you ever you know what Sunbonnet Sue is, it's like Sunbonnet little girl uh, thing, little girl thing. Yeah. Oh, what's your favorite song in the series? <laughs> um, I, I really, well, I really like the, the title song, the Instagram um, theme song. Um, I like, it was really neat to uh, get um, uh, the opera singers that we got. Um, so both both the Beast song and um, the Queen of the Cloud song are pretty exciting, like to put into the kids' show. Um, so yeah, those are. Yeah, so it was sort of a scene that got cut, um, but basically, like he just is too into what he's doing with going to talk to um, to Sarah that he just is like thinking about other things and just puts on the wrong shoes and leaves. Um, and it, it was sort of just a, like, a visual thing about like what's going on in Mark's brain when he's like, not, I don't know, not, not all together yet. Um, incomplete in the songs. Um, out of all of the plays Um, maybe Nemo. Yeah, I think maybe, yeah, I think it's sort of just like listen to him do whatever. Just yeah, you just watch him live his life. Like, they were worried about like not answering all the questions, and 
uh, and being too weird and stuff like that. If people are, have watched it all the way to episode eight, they're gonna watch the last couple. And like, even if you leave it like kind of unsettling and whatever, I think it's better. Um, so it was, that was like the only thing that was really like, a small fight, but they were really good about it. Uh, uh, maybe, I'm not gonna say. Uh, there's certain things that, like, if, if we are able to tell any more stories in that world or uh, in the future, I would probably want to save them for that. Uh, so, hopefully, if we can, then give it a I I doubt it. Uh, but I'm hoping maybe we can use more comics to fill in some gaps and stuff. So, but, <laughs> Um, I think, I think maybe the, working on the music was probably the most fun. Um, it was, it was like later in the production, so the stress kind of died down and, um, we kind of, we were getting the animation back and it was full color so you could like watch it and then you were just kind of making it better at that point. Uh, and then the composers were really fun to hang out with. Him. I felt like I was a musician even though I'm not really, so it was like, yeah, that was probably the most fun. Right. Um, also the brainstorming, like just daydreaming and coming up with stuff. Uh, so I think the, uh, the bookends of it, the middle part was <laughs> stressful, but the beginning and end of it were, were, were good. What's that? Um, it's, it's, it's sort of less vague on purpose, um, but works like, High school and Greg is sort of I don't know. Greg's <laughs> sort of like not really a specific age because he looks oh, like he would be I don't know four years old or something. Um, but I don't think he is. I think he's a little bit older than that. But he's sort of just we're supposed to define that kind of angsty teenage thing, and then Greg's supposed to define sort of the more fun. Not quite nice to get, you know. Uh, and so, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, on uh, babes, babes in the wood. Uh, I forget. I think he stayed when when he like he's jumping on the trampoline thing and then he like hits into the the gate. And he falls down and he rolls off screen and he's like, roll, roll, roll. That's <laughs> pretty <laughs> 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 uh, I was a storyboard artist. And then we were also all invited to the writers' meeting. So that was like really fun. Was, like, we'd all just hang out in a big room and like come up with stuff and tell embarrassing stories about our lives. And uh, yeah. <laughs> like once one episode that I didn't even work on at all. Um, was like based on like a, a story of my life where uh, I was like at a friend's house sleeping sleeping over and uh, we were like we went into the bathtub uh, to like have a private conversation about girls uh, and we were just like sitting there like oh yeah 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 you know, and, and, uh, and then his, his grandma came in and, and like sat down and started, and started using the toilet and, and we just we just had to like, we just had to like, not like, you know, it was the most, oh, it was the scariest thing. And so, like, and then there was also, there was also a, like a, a bunny that was in the bath, in the bathroom, like it, it stayed in like a location in the bathroom. So she was like talking to the bunny, and like, and we're just not laughing, you're not laughing, and we're covering each other's mouth. Um, and that, that became a fun like, <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I'm doing some stuff that I can't really talk about, but I'm pitching some things, um, and, um, uh, if that adventure time movie goes, uh, there's a chance that I might be able to work on that, so, um,
No, it was it was always um, intended. Like originally, Wharton Greg, the first episode of Wharton Greg in their hometown, and then it's like Halloween night, and then this train shows up. They get on the train accidentally, and then as they're going on the train, they realize it's full of dead people, and they're like, oh, this is not the train that we want to be on. Uh, and so they jump off halfway between life and death, and then they're just in this like weird in between place. Um, but I forget why that didn't work, but there were all sorts of reasons why that didn't work when we started actually like, trying to make it work. And so then we were like, trying to simplify it, just showing we started with the series of like, work running from the cops and just like falling, and we were just like, not really sure what's going on. But it felt like uh, it took away from the fantasy aspect to know that too early, um, because then you're just sort of like, if, if, if the comfortable place is home, then you're kind of watching it being like, yeah, none of this is, they're just waiting for them to get home or something. Uh, but if you're kind of one, if the characters are mysterious, then you're kind of wondering, what's their story, you know, all that. Uh, so it seemed more interesting. I didn't want to have it a reveal at the very end, because that would be like enough just to be like, hey, we saw all the film, you know, and, and so, so we tried to reveal it earlier, like in episode nine, rather than episode 10, so that you kind of like adjust to it, um, and then, they can see the conclusion. Of that song? Uh, there's, there's a song, there's a version of that song that has um, a little bit more guitar solo, but that's all we wrote for it. Um, originally it was going to be a kayak song, which is like a progressive rock. Band, um, and uh, we realized they were like, "Who cares about the rest of the world?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the name, how they came up. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played it, uh, so but it seems cool. <laughs> I did, I, just, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I haven't played games in a while, not because I don't want to, I really like video games a lot. Um, but I've just, with, with like, getting married and having a kid and running the show and everything, it's just like I've been out of it for a while, so I'm not sure how to get back into it. Um, I mean, yeah, but, so, sort of yes and no. I've never played it, but I'm probably a fan of it. Well, there we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. It's, it's not to me. I've, I've been bugging people for an hour, but like, no one, it seems like no one's really in charge of that uh, or something. And like, the, the same thing with the soundtrack. It's like, really, like, it just seems like it would be so easy to put on iTunes because it's already, it exists and then you just list, you know. But um, I don't think, I don't know if there's an apartment for it or that, I don't know. I've just had trouble finding the right people to talk to that. Um, I think also with DVDs, I think I said this yesterday, but I don't know if it makes a lot, they make a lot of money. And with such a short thing that doesn't have like a huge, it's not like Adventure Time where like they know that they're gonna sell a certain amount, like it's hard to sell. So that, that's why they put out iTunes and all this stuff. So at least people can get it. But I sure would like to have it. Um, yeah, I don't know if you saw the, that video. That was not, I never wanted to do it like that. Uh, but there was a version where he was more like small but the Danny DeVito kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> like where it would, it, would, it would seem sort of funny, but then it would be like, like really okay, scary. Yeah, sure. um, and uh, you kind of feel bad for him in some way. Uh, but then eventually it just felt like it might be nicer if you just never see him. Just this kind of big presence in the woods, it kind of can represent a lot of things. Um, and when we were trying to figure out what, like, because we always wanted to have like that moment where you kind of reveal them really quickly, and we worked on like, so many ideas about what that would be from the very beginning where we, we talked about like, you know, this, this certain kind of moth that then builds like webs and, and uh, we're thinking of maybe like, webs and stuff stuck inside of it. And, um, all that kind of 
stuff. Uh, but it seemed like this is really the best, scariest, weird thing. Um, like the difference? Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't have been able to run the miniseries um, from afar, because it's just like too much stuff that just, you need to be able to just quickly like, talk to people uh, in your vicinity. Um, but when I was working remotely, it was, it was nice. Uh, I was, at that point I was just uh, working on Adventure Time as a writer, um, and uh, that was a nice, satisfying job. It was just like, my have writers meeting, we just hang out with Ken and Ben and Adam and stuff, and then it's like, okay, then I'll write it, and then just write it, and then come back and meet. Uh, um, so that was, yeah, that was a really fun it, I was it was better working in the bar. <laughs> I think, because then I can separate my life from my work. Um, when I was working on the news series, it was like, I was working all day, and when I came home, I was like, still working, and then, you know, come, come back and work. So, how did you come up with the name Word? Um, well, when my son was going to be born, uh, we were looking at names uh, <laughs> just to name him, and I found that one. I was like, well, not, not that for my son, but like it's a really neat name. So, uh, And I liked, for some reason, I wanted Word to have like, a W name. It felt, I don't know, <laughs> the right sound. Um, and it felt like sort of like an arrow. Or, I don't know. Something about the name just like stuck with me. It's like, uh, it felt like the right. Uh, let's see. Um, of all the of all the shows that you worked with and the people who've done the voices, who would you uh, say you uh, enjoyed working with uh, the most if you got the chance to meet them? Uh, the voice actor. Uh, like, uh, for example, Christopher Lloyd and uh, Elijah Wood for Over the Garden Wall. Um, there's so many people that was like amazing. Uh, <laughs> Tim Curry. Uh, well, Jack Jones, who, who did the, the frogs singing voice and stuff, mm -hmm. that was pretty incredible. Um, yeah. that, his album, Lollipops and Roses, was like something that I listened to a lot in college and everything. And, so, mm -hmm. and you said you also did uh, writing for uh, Adventure Time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, th I heard uh, this guy uh, did uh, the voice for Banana Man, Weird Al. Did you get to meet him? I did not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> on Adventure Time, because uh, when, when I was in L.A. Uh, and I was working as a career director, like I wasn't able to go to, like I was in some other meeting or something. So a lot of the time when there were like cool people coming, I didn't get to. You know. hmm. well, yeah. If you did, would you get the chance? Would you love to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. Sorry. That's it. <laughs> yeah. uh...